Hello everyone, welcome to Horse Grave again to part 15. We're going to be checking out this incredibly cool gimmick, a takeoff of the original game, House of the Dead 2, and we're essentially using a keyboard in lieu of a gun. The game is called Typing of the Dead. It was on the original Dreamcast and one of my beloved favorites along with great games such as Gauntlet Legends, Fantasy Star Online V2, Sonic Adventure 2, and so on. And the people behind us have a tremendously funny, hysterical, absurd sense of humor as the wordplay is on proportions with... All your base belong to us. Let's check this out for a moment. Chapter 1, a prelude for absolute beginners? No. Chapter 2, money for now says, no way. Chapter 3, darkness for intermediates? Hell no. I'm going to go right to chapter 5 for typing masters and see if I can get through this relatively unscathed. It's been a hot minute since I've last played this, but I have faith that I'll at least get to the stage. But the words, as I mentioned, are hilarious to behold. Gotta get in my groove. Okay. What a lovely day. <laughs> Sometimes you actually get dictionaries with STDs, you know, sexually transmitted diseases, which is very funny. I can't bump the keyboard, I tell ya. I should be nearing the boss battle now. Anytime I mess up, just blame uh, the cat pump of the keyboard. Like that, the cat bump the keyboard again. Come on now. Get away. Should be nearing the boss battle if I remember correctly. Here we go. Boss mode activate. I can do this. Ah, oh, I got hit once there. Okay, I guess I'll continue. Darn cat, stop bumping the keyboard. We can do this. Ah, uh, one third the way there. Nope, you ain't getting me this time. Halfway there. Nope, right the last second. Stop bumping the keyboard, you cat. You ain't getting me this time. Go, can't go. No more pumping the keyboard. One more time. Ah, there you go. You're down. And we're going to be switching over to the mini and checking out some more awesome games for Horse Trader against the Part 15, but I'm going to be playing more of this in future videos. Definitely a cool game. Oh wait, we're not done with the stage yet. Oh well, let's see where we can go here. I was thinking we were done, it's been a while. Oh, 
Oh, the real boss, maybe. Predator? Oh, I see. I can't always type. There's... That's kind of cool. I'd... When it blinks out, I can't type because the enemy can't be hit by me. Okay, a little bit uh, unintuitive there. It's been a while. Oh, jeez. Darn, can't bump the keyboard again. Almost done. Predator, manfish. Blame the cat. Okay. Too bad. You're better off that way. Ah, we're still going here. Stop bumping the keyboard. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Can't bump the keyboard again, I, I swear. So this is Goldie's headquarters. What? Yeah, I'll definitely be coming back to this. It is a fun game. Oh, that's a boss, all right. Really? If I make a mistake, I get hit? So I have to type the word perfectly. No mistakes. Don't bump the keyboard, cat. Oh, great. I can do this. Very interesting. Almost there. Oh, great. Can't bump the keyboard again. I'm telling you, this cat needs to get away from me when I'm recording these videos. Imitation beer? Yeah, I need some of that right now.
Okay, almost done. Celery peach, what? That didn't work out too well. I should have. I was laughing at the words. <laughs> Well, maybe I should let the cat play the game. He'll probably do a better job than me. Near the end. That was a fail. <laughs> so close. I'm pretty sure the stage is done now. And we have success. Now we're going to switch over to the mini now, uh, once I ensure that I'm done with the stage. Okay, chapter 5 result, and I'm going to play more of this game in future videos, but uh, we're going to switch over to the mini now. One of the biggest gripes that I've had over the years, and many of you may have had as well, is that licensing is absolute horrendous hell. And this beautiful game that I hold close and dear to my heart has befell the fate of being stuck in limbo as far as licensing is concerned. We're talking about Alien vs. Predator from 1994, fantastic arcade side scrolling brawler made by Capcom, and along with Konami and SNK, they absolutely cornered the arcade side scrolling brawler market. I mean, you couldn't go into an arcade. Or walk by an arcade without hearing Simpsons, TMNT, X-Men, Punisher, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, and Alien vs. Predator. Well, let's get the show on the road here. Uh, we have a Predator Warrior, a Predator Hunter, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Hasta La Vista style character. And of course, uh, a female antagonist. We'll start out with a Predator Warrior. And, um, unfortunately, hell will have to freeze over before we realistically see this released on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and or Nintendo Switch. But we'll invariably and inevitably have uh, multiple more Predator, Alien, and even Terminator and Prometheus movies. And uh, speaking of uh, Prometheus, the latest movie called Alien Covenant, which is actually essentially a prequel to Alien, but a sequel to Prometheus, I actually found enjoyable despite its lackluster, less than stellar reviews because the, the main people, the characters in the movie, make idiotic decisions which... Uh, basically lead to the Alien franchise. I don't want to give too much away, but if you're going to watch that movie, watch it from the perspective of a Mystery Science Theater 3000 because they make some goofy moves in a movie and the, what's coming to them comes to them as expected. But uh, Michael Fassbender turned in a tremendous performance. I hope to see him in a follow-up movie. I mean, Alien Covenant didn't really make a lot of bank in the theater, but I absolutely hope they do another one. It's a trap! Star Wars reference, you might ask yourself? Okay, what is this guy here? Let's take him out. I've always loved the Aliens vs. Predator uh, games. I mean, even uh, Atari Jaguar one, which unfortunately we cannot run well. And look, this guy here just did a Blanka style attack. Go figure. I mean, Blanka isn't a character by the same company that made this game. Street Fighter 2. I'm going to actually hold down the attack button and hold down select and activate turbo fire. Just remember if you'd like to deactivate it, you can uh, do the same thing. Hold down the attack button and then push select to deactivate it. Let's do some of this awesomeness. Overheat. I've overheated way too many times playing Excite Bike way, way back. I guess I'm going to have to pick a different character here. We'll pick the Asta La Vista style character. And yes, I'm looking forward to another Terminator movie as well. I can't get enough of all these Terminator, Alien, and Predator movies. Even Predator 2 with Danny Glover, you know, getting too old for this crap type of scenario is uh, still an entertaining movie, so to speak. Just remember, when you're done using Turbo Fire, make sure to uh, disable it. Otherwise, you might run into another game and have issues and forget that you've actually uh, enabled Turbo Fire. A very, very cool game. And 
I really thoroughly hope they somehow find a way to bring this back. I mean, even if Disney buys this out and re-releases it to have a little bit of a cash cow, it'd be awesome. Oh, we're going to move on to some other horse trap against the games right now, but uh, let me de disable my turbo fire. I'm going to go into the next stage real quick. Again, I'm going to hold down the attack button. I'm holding on the attack button and then pushing select. Now it's disabled. Now I can properly quit. And uh, since I was talking about a side bike having that uh, glitch, I'm going to do a little bit of a tangent here and uh, go to low content. Star Trek 3 dummy folder. And yes. Because we know uh, any of you who have been watching my videos, I typically go off a tangent where I'll be thinking of something on the fly and just have to go back to that. Retrospectively. So I'm going to do a side bike right now. And this glitch is very, very tough to pull off, as I mentioned. But I'll show you uh, essentially how it works. I'm going to load it with the F-C-E-U-M-M -M core. I like both that as well as Nystopia. Them are the two primary cores I use for NES. A game like Micro Machines, uh, if, you have, uh, if you run it on F-C-E-U-M-M, -M, it'll actually have glitches, but on Nystopia it runs fine, so to each his own. And the design level is really, really cool in this game. Uh, I'm also uh, going to start uh, right here. I'll show you essentially how this glitch works. I had a little bit of a running, uh, running joke way back when the NES Classic came out because uh, there was a little issue where you could get a C8 error simply by navigating too many folders or load too many games in a row without shutting down. So I had this joke that we should imp uh, basically implement a little temperature gauge like in the Excite Bike right here where you overheat. Look at that. If you do that, if you do the right trajectory and velocity and you do like a triple jump there, you can literally just jump off the top of the screen. But uh, one thing you can do to actually pull it off and uh, a little easier is go into create mode and I'll show you what I'm talking about real fast. And now I... Uh, clarify the rest of my little joke okay if you do a bunch of these speed uh boosts right there right in front of one of those uh ramps which i'll show you again those and then a few ramps in a row and do like a triple jump you can jump off the top of the screen and come up to the bottom very very tough to pull off but you can find videos online like uh you know little speed runs of it where people do the glitch it is incredibly cool but this temperature gauge, because we had the C8 errors on the NES Classic originally, I thought it'd be hilarious to make it, every time you load a game, to have the temperature gauge go up a little bit, and then when it gets to the point where it's overheating, you have to shut your system down to clear the cache, and then uh, pretty much uh, start over again. But we're going to move on to some more licenses in the hell right now, because uh, there's another arcade game that was really cool, and you couldn't go to the arcade without hearing this one as well. We're talking about real Ghostbusters, and the license in hell is... Initially, when it came out, they were Ghostbusters, but then they realized that there was already a Ghostbusters out, so they uh, retitled themselves to real Ghostbusters, and we all know what happened from that point on. Merchandise, movies, that fantastic Ray Parker Jr. song, which I stayed up in the middle of the night on MTV again and again and again to hear that awesome song. When I finally learned how to play drums, I had to do that drum solo. Okay, uh, this game looks, feels, plays, uh, sounds like a Ghostbusters game, but is it really a Ghostbusters game? Let's check it out. Somebody might have pulled the wool over your eyes on this one. I'm going to explain this. Very, very cool, and uh, it starts out seemingly like Uncanny X-Men on Nintendo, but it is not nearly as bad as that. It is actually a fun game with a two-player uh, two mode activate, as you can see at the top right of the screen. So it's definitely a great game to tag along with a friend on. But guess what, guys and gals? This is actually not really a Ghostbusters game. It is reskinned from a Japanese arcade game. And just to get on to the cash cow, the little bandwagon of... Uh, Everybody else making a pretty penny off of the Ghostbusters uh, license and such. None other than this one too. But I'm going to play this for a few more moments and move on to uh, the original Japanese game that this is actually uh, reskinned from. And yes, uh, reskins are very, very common. You just do not realize this unless somebody points them out to you. 
A very, very cool game, and uh, I definitely recommend checking this out. But we're going to move on to the Japanese original that this is reskinned from. And there are countless games throughout the history of my recollection that have had this exact same scenario and partake them. We have Make A.O. Hunter G, which is uh, the real, real Ghostbusters game. And yes, I'm a big fan of the original cartoon, too. I mean, never got old. Okay, let's check this out for a moment. The real, real Ghostbusters game. The one that it was reskinned from. Starts out the same. But we have enemies that look like they're straight out of the Purge movies and or Mad Max Fury Road. And by the way, I absolutely love Fury Road. Great, great movie. And, uh... I'd have to say that I love the fact that they had the original director, George Martin, in it, as well as use countless practical effects. I love all the Mad Max movies, and I remember uh, even Mad Max 3 Beyond Thunderdome was really enjoyable. And I'm not really like a, should I say, a Tina Turner fan, but We Don't Need Another Hero was a pretty catchy song, and I'm a big 80s music fan. But yes, this is another game, and they're different enough to warrant playthroughs on both of them. Especially with two-player mode activate. But very, very interesting that they decided on this game to be the real Ghostbusters reskin. And this isn't the only game that's been reskinned throughout uh, history. I'm going to show you a few more examples here. But definitely check out Make It Hunter G as well. And uh, we're going to do another reskin, and I'm going to go over the story behind why this reskin happened. We're going to play this uh, Famicom Disk System game, and some of you are going to be like, Oh, I know exactly which game you're talking about, but many of you will not know what I'm talking about initially. Yum, Kuju, Doki, Doki, Panic. And there's a very, very interesting story as to why a certain game never got a true sequel released in the United States. But let's uh, get the show on the road on this specific game, and then I'll go into that story. And if you're running uh, any FDS games, you're going to need the Famicom Disk System BIOS, of course. And you would use R1 and L1 to be able to uh, uh, push the disk out and flip it over and reinsert it. I mean, it's not that complicated. Just use your L1 and R1. Hopefully, you're not trying to do this with an NES controller because it takes a little more Genesis quality as far as remapping in order to pull it off. Do you know what game I'm playing yet? This is actually a game that was reskinned for the American market, and uh, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about once I start playing this in a moment here. I have to set side B, so I'm pushing the L1 and R1, of course. Okay, here we go. Uh, what's going on here? Normally I would have Mario, Luigi, the Princess, and Toasto, but I have somebody else completely here. Yes, this is actually the original game that Super Mario Bros. 2 that we all know of as in the United States was initially. I mean, Nintendo basically uh, saw something in this uh, game and reskinned it for release in the U.S. market. And the reason why is that the original Super Mario Bros. 2 was deemed too difficult for uh, Westerners to play, so they didn't release it over here. And yes, Super Mario Bros. 2, the true Mario 2, was a very, very tough game, but I'm actually very happy they made this decision because this is a really cool game that we may never have had otherwise. And we got the real Super Mario Bros. 2 on uh, Super Mario All-Stars years later on the Super Nintendo called Lost Levels. I mean, very, very cool game, and I'm very, very glad they uh, had this come out. And this game is not a pushover either. If you try doing this from stages 1 to 8, it's actually a pretty difficult game, but... uh. We're going to play the real Super Mario Bros. 2 right now, because I know all of you have played this one, just not the one that it was reskinned from, but here's the real Super Mario Bros. 2, which you can also play on uh, Super Mario All-Stars as uh, Lost Levels, except that one has the updated graphics, music, and of course the Parallax Squirrel, which you would typically see in a Sega Genesis game. Sega Genesis was very, very prominent as far as Parallax Squirrel, especially with the Thunder Force style games. But right now we're playing the real Super Mario Bros. 2. And we can pick Mario and Luigi. Luigi actually has a higher jump. But let's play this game like we'd typically play any other Mario game. dum da dum da dum I'm a little bit small here. I'm going to get my mushroom and make it a little easier. dum da dum Hit the boss. Get a mushroom. 
There's my trusty, rusty mushroom. I'll just stay over here, mind my own business. What? There you go. A little inside joke there. And Nintendo also didn't think we could handle uh, playing a game like Zelda, the original Legend of Zelda, because our attention span wouldn't be able to quantify the time allotment to be able to play a game that is RPG uh, proportions. But as we all seen from the Final Fantasy, which was supposed to be the Final Fantasy, but uh, <laughs> okay, there's <laughs> I screwed up on that one. I believe there's actually a mushroom up there. I'm gonna let this mushroom take me out again. The cat bumped the controller. But yes, the Final Fantasy made by Square was actually supposed to be the Final Fantasy, but a dozen plus sequels later, we are uh, in a point where everybody and their mother and their brother and their sister love at least one of the Final Fantasy games in some uh, retrospective or another. Okay, let's get this. And I have this little property where I can just jump up here like this. Nice. And I've actually played through all the Final Fantasy games on my lunch and breaks over a course of two years. I mean, I played them all. And I'm expecting, because of this being a more difficult game, to run into the cloud monsters. Yes, we all love our Mario games. I love my Metroids, my Marios, and all that good stuff. Now I'm waiting for Metroid Prime 3 to come out on the Nintendo Switch. That'd be my primary reason to buy it. Up to that point, I probably won't buy the Switch until Metroid Prime 3 comes out. I bought a GameCube for Metroid Prime 1. That mushroom didn't last very long. I'm at least going to try to get to the second stage here and see what kind of difficulty scale it has here. And I'm sure this game has tons of secrets as well, just like Mario 1. You can probably even jump over the flagpole. And uh, ironically, the arcade version of Super Mario Bros., which is called Verse Super Mario Bros., actually has a difficulty skill which is uh, increasingly uh, more than the uh, Nintendo version because they want to be able to get more quarters out of you. You need 150 coins to get a free guy. Okay, from the get-go, we have a little bit of a precision jump here, which would be a little bit more difficult with Mario, but you have to do a little bit of a run and jump here, which is definitely uh, kind of surprising for Stage 1-2. But I'm going to have to come back to this and uh, actually see if there's actually a warp zone at the end of the stage. Oh, there's a mushroom. Am I going to be able to get the mushroom now? Let's see. I'm going to uh, see if I can pull off uh, getting a warp zone here. If there is even a warp zone. I'm going to go to the end of the second stage like I typically would. It's been a while since I played this. I actually last played this on uh, Mario All-Stars. I have a feeling it's... Uh-oh. I don't even know if I can jump up there now. But I have a feeling that if, if I jump up there, there might be a warp zone. And look, they make it where you can't even do that little glitch where you uh, do the backwards jump into the wall, like that. I guess I'll go here and see what's next. But I'm going to move on to some more horse turf again, so this. And I do wonder if you're able to jump over the flying pole, like if you get a nice enough jump. I know you can do it in uh, at least one of the stages in the original Super Mario Bros. But we're going to move on to some more Horse Trevor Games. The awesome. Listen, um, we're going to be getting into another reskin game. And again, we're the overlying theme of today is License and How. And uh, I'm going to go over another scenario which I brought up before. But uh, let's get to uh, more of these games right now. I'm going to be loading uh, another uh, game that actually suffered the fate of reskin. But this is License and How as well because... Uh, we're talking about Common No Ninja Hana Maru. The problem with licenses is uh, once you have a license, that license could expire and uh, the game could be unavailable from that point forward. You might not be able to uh, buy it again. And I'm going to give perfect examples of this when I switch over to my PS3 in a couple minutes here. But this is a great game here, but uh, like TurboGrafx-16, this is a very, very Japanese-themed game, which uh, might not uh, be accessible to the Western market in the United States, and that, that is the exact reason why the TurboGrafx-16 failed over here, is that many of the games, a vast majority of the games, were actually very Japanese-themed in nature, and uh, they weren't quite our Contra, our Mega Man, and so on. I mean, our straight, cut-and-dry games. But uh, what they did is they took this game, which was obviously a really cool game, and they reskinned it for re-release in the U.S. market. And I'm going to show you which uh, game this was actually reskinned as. And again, just like Real Ghostbusters and Michael Hunter G, 
and even Doki Doki Panic, it is cool to play these and see the differences between them. There are minute differences between uh, all of these reskins, but we're going to load the other game that I'm talking about right now in reference. They reskinned this game for re-release, and uh, I'm going to show you what they're calling it. Yo Noid, the pizza guy from the Domino's commercials, go figure. But yes, uh, once the license expires, you would probably not have a chance in hell of ever getting this game as a downloadable title on your Nintendo Switch, Wii, or uh, 3DS. I mean, you have a better chance of getting Common No as the, the game. But yet another licensed game. And again, these licensed games uh, pretty much uh, drop like flies once the license expires. This is also an incredibly difficult game because, like, Little Nicky, not Little Nicky with Adam Sandler, I mean Kid Nicky, the great, great, uh, Data East game. You actually, uh, get hit once and you're done. But really, really cool game. I love, uh, I love Kid Nicky. Great, great game. I'm not gonna go off on a tangent on that one right now. I'll just, uh, play it in another video. But this is a tough game, and again, it's a reskin off of the common no game. And uh, here's what I find very, very interesting here. I mean, we're talking about licenses. I mean, we have Superman who's had terrible, terrible games. And uh, uh, Ghostbusters haven't had the best games either. But uh, Ghostbusters have had some pretty awesome games. I mean, they probably have like a 40% rate uh, success rate as far as great games are concerned. I mean, some of the Activision ones that were on Nintendo and uh, on various uh, computer systems were not that great of games, but I absolutely love the one that was on Mega Drive, which I'm going to load up right now. This is one of the best Ghostbusters games, without a doubt. Yes, this is easily one of my go-to games along with Hard Driving and Lakers vs Celtics. If I could think of any game that I essentially dump more hours into than any other on the original Mega Drive, it would most certainly and absolutely be Lakers vs Celtics, with its great historical legacy roster of real-life basketball players from the late 80s and early 90s. Me and my friends put a good couple hundred hours into the game. Played it so much that it permanently imprinted onto my TV screen when I powered it off. I mean, think of Michael Jordan and Mark Price being burned into your TV permanently when you turn it off. I'm exaggerating a little bit on that fact, but yes, when I turned the TV off, I did see Lakers vs Celtics, the court, on my TV screen. But this game right here has impeccable production values, great gameplay, graphics, music, style, substance, and a truly solid challenge factor. It also has a very, very nifty graphical style of a super deformed nature, of which we didn't have enough of in the United States overall. I mean, this is one of the few that I can think of that actually had super deformed graphics in the United States. But essentially, we have a little bit of a setup here where you can do the various stages, locations, and uh, you get monetary value as far as them are concerned. I mean, I can get $2,000 from beating this one, 4000 from that one, 6000 from that one, 8000 from that one. Obviously, do not even go to the 8000 one unless you're better at the game. Because this definitely doesn't have a pushover challenge. But I'm going to do the first stage right here. And you can actually earn power-ups and upgrades with your money to make the higher difficulty levels easier to traverse and more accessible. Kind of like you uh, earn money in games such as Fantasy Zone, also made by Sega, to buy power-ups to help you out on the boss battles. But yes, I love Super Deformed Graphics, and if you've never seen it before, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in a moment here. And again, there are not many games like this in the United States that I can recall off the top of my head, but i played many of these in uh, my previous videos, and some of these are on Famicom and Super Famicom, such as Wampaku Graffiti Splatterhouse, which is a great, playful, humorous take on the original, more truly violent, broad in nature of uh, the Splatterhouse legacy. That one you wouldn't want to let a kid play because of the gore and violence, but the Splatterhouse of Mpaku Graffiti, you can most certainly let a kid play because, I mean, even on the first boss encounter, Dracula dances. I mean, it is very, very funny. Then, of course, uh, okay, let me get past this part without feeling miserably here because my cat's bumping a controller again. Then we have uh, uh, Akumo Bosa and Khan, which is uh, Kid Dracula, which we've had on the Game Boy. Great, playful, cutesy take on the Castlevania Legacy. We've had it on the Game Boy, but in black and white. Whereas in Japan, they had it in glorious color on the Famicom. And then lastly, we've had YY World 2, which is uh, essentially 
Konami World 2 in nature, and it is a very, very cool gimmick where you have uh, characters from various Konami games playing levels from other Konami games. So you get a Bill from Contra in the Castlevania stage, and uh, Simon from Castlevania in a Contra stage. Very, very cool. I'm actually going to activate Co uh, CobraCon right now by holding down the attack button while I'm holding select. So I'm holding down the attack button, I'm pushing select, and I activate it, Turbo Fire Activate! And you can disable it the same way, just like I did in the Alien vs Predator, I think. This has a little bit of the Portergeist feel to it from Spider House 1 too. There's our beloved Slimer. Very, very predominant in the cartoon series and comics and such. And then we're going to talk about another scenario right now. We're going to talk about other licensed characters that have had success or misfortune as far as games are concerned. And we all know that licensed characters typically fail or succeed on the basis of deadlines. I mean, we got to get this E.T. game out in three weeks and get it out by Christmas. Failed miserably, of course. And this is a skippable boss encounter. Can't keep bumping my controller there. But yes, uh, deadlines are one of the biggest double-edged swords as far as uh, licensed games are concerned. But we're talking about successful licenses. If, at the top of my head, I could probably think of the most successful licensed character would easily be Spider-Man. And the second one would probably be Batman. And I'd say the one that has the least success would easily be Superman, and he's only had probably three good games. I mean, I mean, if, if you count DC Universe, that's not too bad either, but the best game by Superman would easily be Death and Return of Superman, a great side scroll and brawler made by Sunsoft. Very, very cool game. And I gotta use a little bit of strategy here. See if I can take this boss battle out without losing the life here. I can do this. But there is one third character who's also had tremendous success with licenses, and uh, I'm going to give you to the end of this video game demonstration to try to guess who I'm talking about. It is a very, very unlikely candidate, but you'll see who I'm talking about after this game example right here. And we have our eight uh, way fire here, which is. Uh, very much like the run and gun contra nature, always welcome in these games. There's even an Adventures of Batman and Robin game that also has a eight player contra style to it, also on the Mega Drive Second Genesis, which is also cool. Okay, we gotta capture a ghost here. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Been a while. There we go. I've got it, Dan Aykroyd. Oh, we should be nearing the boss battle now. And yes, you can actually pause it and have a sub menu. I have items like infrared scope, my peak and duck, some bombs. And there's our Slimer again. But yes, this is not a pushover game. It is very, very challenging. And I have three bombs, which should be able to help me out here. And it is one of those boss battles where uh, the color changes uh, depending on how much life it still has left. So it should turn to a darker color if I remember correctly. And another great Ghostbusters game was actually the PS3 Xbox 360 one. Very, very cool game. It even had a zombie style mode with ghosts, which is literally just like out of a Call of Duty game. One of the sole reasons I play Call of Duty games is for the zombie mode activate. And we both died at the same time there, go figure. <laughs> well, I took out this boss battle where I should be able to have some money and buy an upgrade for the next stage. How many games have you played where you took out the boss and died on the boss battle and then it screwed you and made you do the entire boss battle again? It happens. Okay, let's see if I can buy any upgrades now. Then we're going to move on to uh, some more uh, horse extravaganza. But Ghostbusters, fantastic game, slip be uh, between the cracks, very, very obscure. People don't really talk about it so much anymore. 
I mean, most people talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. That is the most commonly mentioned game on Sega Genesis. Okay, we should have enough to buy an upgrade here. We should have a weapon and an item shop if I, uh, shop if I remember correctly. And I love games that have power-ups and upgrades. It really adds to the allure of playing the game over and over again. And this unmistakable, catchy music. Uh, we can pick a new stage. We can do item and weapon shop. Um, I could do what I typically do in a game and actually keep saving my money until I get enough to buy a better weapon. Or I can just buy this bubble projectile right now. Okay. Uh, let's go to the item shop. Uh, let's buy a few, uh, bombs. Why not? Okay, that should be good. Now I'm gonna go to the action of the next stage. Have you figured out the other character that has uh, tremendous success as far as licensed games are concerned yet? As I mentioned, it is a very, very unlikely hero, but we're gonna do action start. And check out the uh, bubble launcher for a quick second here. Okay, I can pause the game and switch to my bubble projectile here. Oh, definitely a lot easier to use than the other weapon. So I can take off uh, in a nice 45 degree angle. It's very, very nice. With turbo fire, this is definitely a lot easier. Doing the moonwalk. <laughs> but we're going to move on to some more horse driver games right now. I'm going to move on to the other licensed character that I was just talking about that has had great success just like Batman and Spider-Man. Uh, I'm talking about none other than Castle Illusion star Mickey Mouse. Yes. Yes, I can see it right now. I call my buddy up on the phone. Hey, dude. I got this tubular, totally radical, awesome new game with Mickey Mouse where we can, like, bop on enemies and throw apples at them and all kinds of cool stuff. Versus, uh, hey, man, I got this new Spider-Man game called Ultimate Spider-Man where you can actually play as Venom with cell shaded graphics. But uh, here we have Castle Illusion, which is actually a really, really cool game. I have good nostalgia for this game. And uh, you can even go to a hard mode activate right here. It's not a pushover game at all. It actually does have a tremendous challenge factor. I mean, you get to the later stages, it's truly challenging. And I'm also a fan of reboot games and remasters because they actually did re-release this game as a reboot, including downloadable version of this specific game I'm playing right now on the PS3. Xbox 360, and even on mobile phones. But my sister actually used to sneak into my room and play this game when I wasn't around. I mean, she really loved this game too, but uh, I have my eclectic video game nature where I play a game like this, as well as a game like Splatterhouse, and then I play a game like Disney's Lion King, and then I play a game like God of War. Then I have an eclectic musical uh, t uh, nature as well, where I would listen to Air Supply on one end of the spectrum, and then, of course, uh, Slayer on the other end of the spectrum. And then, of course, like, ABBA, Metallica, Biohazard, and, of course, uh, Sepultura, REO Speedwagon, list goes on. And I found many a great band from watching Beavis and Butthead and Headbangers Ball, as well as going to many, many concerts in the, in the 1990s. I still have to tell my story of going to see Black Sabbath in concert when Dio was there and, uh, as the lead singer. And there's a big fight that broke out. That was going to be in my next video when I uh, do the hardest NES part 2. But this is not a pushover game at all. Very, very fun game overall. And of course, if you go to a store, you're not likely to go just go to the uh, shelf and pick off a Mickey Mouse game. You're more likely to pick off a Mega Man X game. And this music is going to be stuck in your head to the end of the day, without a doubt. And there are other games like this as well. I mean, we have uh, World of Illusion, Magical Quest, list goes on. Again, Mickey, Mickey Mouse has had pretty good success as far as video games are concerned. Unlike poor Superman. And actually, one of the better Sega CD games is actually the Mickey Mania. Oh, great apple rolling down India in the Jones style. Hey, buddy, you want to come over and we can do the stage where we have an apple rolling at us? Just like an Indiana Jones and a... Raiders of the Lost Ark. 